um, as we were testing the thing. Touch is gone. Oh, that's no, no surprise. Capital gone as well. Again, pretty common. The interesting yeah. thing that you have to remember about that as well is the fact that when you've got a player like Chloroform on the side of uh, Fab, finishing things out there with uh, with the Maestro. That makes sense. Maestro, I, I don't know if it's just me, but swinging that Eld around on this map. There's, there's so much less support there for the Monty as well as you lose two of those players so quickly and jumping straight in. We spoke about Scatman making a load of these crazy jumps, not with a shotgun this time, but he still was able to bring Afro down in the endeavor. He's just going to try and force and man mode his way in to the building, goes for the melee and goes for the legs, but can't quite land it. The cover is there. Chloroform with DCH picking up a quick trade and hiding in the corner. Scatman from nowhere has swum this round into a two versus one, all down to Shin and no one left. A Xavier lock in that first round. And now it's just trying to find your way inside. Last time it was a sneaky maneuver that came off, but number two is trying to make sure that doesn't happen again. A quick swing round, still buried on the top floor with the doubling up here of the Jaeger. In the meantime, Scatman is just gonna put the diffuser down. It's a two versus two. They know that they're planning at this point to bring on the round and keep it going. We're in a post plant for the first time today. And one down, it's a one versus nobody. There is a fantastic clutch. Looking for the close angles here against the Hard Destruction, but Pulse is going to be a bit of a surprise as DC Edge catches them on the close side rather than the far side, and that puts us in a three versus two. And the remaining members of Fav Gaming know that they don't have to worry too much. Scatman is going in for the plant, and that's going to mean Xavier have to move on forward, and if they can't catch out in the gunfights, as DCH proves with those final two kills, then it is a round that does go to Xavier. Fav looked pretty in a good position there, but as soon as they had to move forward with the fear of the They've been creatively aggressive in that they're setting themselves up with these holds <gasps> and doing things like that, and they haven't quite found any consistency there. Well, another one falls. And obviously, there is this control over on the west side of the map from Xavier already, but if you don't know where those shots are coming from, then Typhon's going to be able to gun you down. Less than 10 seconds, and is really looking desperate here for Xavier. With Scatman, the only one left alive and no time to do it. Well, unfortunately can't get any further than that. The time is disappearing through the fingers of the attackers and even with the drone work and even where... Afro getting the opening kill though onto Red Sun. I said he was getting shut down so early, but Napew's going to be turning things around there onto number two. Low health, so he can't take anything too major if he's looking for a long firefight, but with the bodies closing down and pinged on one side, might not know of the rotation possibility of DCH. There goes another one on the site, and it's now a four versus one. It was Jaeger alone upstairs, and now it's Jaeger alone on the entire map. Finds one with a great bit of surprise, but Xavier's there for the 3-3 cover as we go to the turn of the half. You mentioned Jaeger is alone upstairs, and my first thought was, yeah, but he's really had to spend a lot of time trying to clear out that top floor there because Xavier had so many people off site. Napier's got to be the next one, and he does bring number two down, but he's going to be able to deal with everyone else. He gets two kills, but is traded out at the end by Typon, and that means he won't be able to continue on any further. He's trying to find every bit of aggression he can, and it might be straight into the hands of Maverick. With only 15 seconds and the diffuser now cold on the floor, that is the preparation we saw DCH trying from many different angles, and that's the aggression that has led very well to the favor. Echo is popping off in the background. Oh. Nomad is popped in the entrance of Kocek, and oh no, you are out of time. That was straight into the groin right there. Really aggressive. Well, let's see if they can find some separation here. Ying is alive and able to take the first kill. Unfortunately, Scatman is the victim, but Onigiri is able to take care of Afro with Shin taking a huge amount of damage. They just push around the corner, and that's a whole slew of blue in the top right there to put us in a three versus two. Now, obviously, one of the things we've said about Fav was they're very good at reading how Xavier likes to play, and they've been able to kind of exemplify that in the push. The sneaky rotation round onto the plant here. They might not know that the drops come down, but now they're well aware. Yeah could be because we haven't seen Cafe from Xavier at all. It becomes a bit harder for a well-prepped team to do well their prep. They want to be able to get some of those opening picks to make it easier for them to move in. There go the Candelas as well as the Smokes, but there goes number two. No longer will the Ying remain yeah, alive as Red Sun and now Napew add on to the kill count. Well, it's all slightly falling apart, but Afro is able to find a double in and amongst the backside of that. And with Chloroform off the board, he's going to have to find the ace to lock it down. But Xavier, unfortunately, for Fab, lock it down first. A fantastic opening round there from a team where, well, on their attacks, they didn't look quite as assured as they did on their defense. And that's a huge swathe of momentum they can carry across to map two. At the very start, it really looked like Fab had something on Xavier that they didn't before. 
And Xavier came back to prove that wasn't the case. Very similar to what we saw on Coastline on the last play day, where Fav got nearly all of the rounds on the first half. And yeah, they know what they don't want to go up against. Okay. And nope. well, Red Sun goes down. Obviously, he didn't have the best showing last time uh, in certain rounds before. And it's going to start the trend here. A double C4 kill for DCH looped over the top with only 15 seconds left. Afro and Chloroform have to apply all the pressure and the talents we know they're capable of, but it's a very tough space to do it in. Chloroform from the double window gets one, gets Gets dropped, and with the trade happening on the other side, Scatman swings the round to Xavier. I mean, the whole layout of that part of the map really sets the defenders up for holding crossfires. It's obviously, a big first pick as well, bringing DCH off the board, given what his stats are like. Those smokes going out are going to give Fab the opportunity to move in. Mira really can't see all that much, and eventually you're going to have to take some shots. But with Type 1 going down to the smoke canisters, that means the diffuser does get dropped. Number two should be able to pick it up, but it's all chaos ensuing now. The diffuser gets dropped once again 30 seconds remaining and Xavier are going to be losing players too now they're looking for the intense firefight as the shotgun tries its best from a range it's not really built for more bodies more X's and a two versus one with a pistol swing is something where Sophia picks her back up the desperation on a man swinging a pistol round from a close quarter as well. Wow, there's another gun that Jaeger would be great with right now, but he's very limited and he's not seeming like he is. Oh, so close to some phenomenal highlight reel. But even then, a lot of pride in a pistol that went much more of a distance than anyone thought it could. Yeah, from Scatman, because the smoke's typically not who you'd have there, but Red Sun's not going to be positioned anywhere. So Goya gets taken down very quickly, and actually Shin makes that a 2k, bringing Napu down too. The Vulcan Shield gets one kill, and Typhon follows things up. The trade coming in, and once again, Fluke, this is so aggressive, which is on a Geary left. He doesn't last very long. That was a round that lasted about three seconds, it fell. I'm so sorry you didn't get a chance to speak. No, it's fine. I was just kind of blown away. Red Sun actually playing in the corridor isn't behind a shield. That could make him a bit more vulnerable, but still Favon have made the opportunity to move forward. They're not going to get it if that triple kill comes out there from Red Sun. On a fraction of health, Chloroform is suffering the same dividends, and now it is just Chloroform trying to find some way to put Xavier to sleep. But unfortunately, they are there, guns blazing. And now, once again, one step ahead. I'll be honest, seeing where we've seen the strong points from oh. Fav. Here comes the drone work, here comes the idea of pressure, but again, it's a couple of firing lines and they're going to find themselves on the backside. The close push here comes in. There is one, there's a the cold diffuser, and there's the second. A great swing round from Red Sun as they start to careen up, but it doesn't even matter because Xavier lock it off on the opposite side too. Red Sun on an absolute tear so far. He gets the 3K hey, on the So three. far, they've been chopping and changing, and you're going to have to commit. Scatman getting in that kill. That's going to be type one and make it Shin as well, going down on the side of Fab, and Xavier finally have their way in. Well, now the pressure comes, and Afro gets one back, but <laughs> oh god, Scatman is able to get one more and swings onto Long for Chloroform to finally put him out of misery. There's another quick swing for Chloroform, and the shotgun comes out, but cannot quite catch it. Xavier find themselves one more round in a row. That was really good. <laughs> With her going down that early, and as well with, I assume she was carrying the frag grenades too. DCH getting traded out. That leaves just Afro and Type on here on the side of Fav, going up against Red Sun. He's been showing up a lot on this map, so don't count him out just yet, even though he's low health. With 30 seconds, the time is extremely limited. The Smeckin canister comes out, but there's a great swing from Red Sun, who suddenly went from 0 to 100 there. Everything is ticking in his head as he tries to stick it down one more time. The audio is close. Just on the other side of a soft wall. Afro doesn't entirely know that, but here's the clicking now, and there's the pop-up, and there's the pop-down. Afro, if you were to have two players have a showdown with how things are going so far, well, luckily it was Afro in the side of Fab. Because anyway. One minute remaining, they're going to have to clear some of that out if they are to hope to get anything. But as I say that, Scatman's going to go straight in with the diffuser, and he's not being stopped. It looks like it's going to get all the way in, and that's exactly what happens. Xavier start to get some of those kills, and now Fab find themselves in a post-plant situation. This is a really tough retake, especially as there is a man on that diffuser. I repeat, there's a man on Ooh. that diffuser. He gets one down, doesn't get the second. There is the angle, but it's completely pushed apart by Afro, who is doing more than bits as he battles back. There is a rotation coming through, which can really pull things together. There goes Afro. There goes one more, and there goes the planner. Unbelievable from Napier. That's why you bring an F2. 
That's all I'm gonna say. No, fantastic game. I want to lean into my screen right now and yeah, just, we're, 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 just like getting really close. The diffuser goes down. That's the moment you probably should stay on that bullet hole because that's when it could have really got a kill, one apiece. In the meantime, we're in a post plant and it's a three versus one. On a gear, he tries and unfortunately fails to dance around the pillar with a pistol only left. As Fav, they collapse back in, this time successfully, and keep themselves one round away. Onagiri sends in the lifeline, and that means Xavier can begin to move in through Attic. I'm very intrigued as well by the fact that Shin's not really anywhere to be found. Red Sun neither, as he gets traded out there, and it's a constant backwards and forwards right now. In fact, Shin is just one of those remaining players there with number two. You see, he's going to be using those cameras to be providing the information over to his fellow comrade as they try and defend this side against the three incoming players. The Scatman's getting down the diffuser. This could be it. Well, three rounds in a row, we've seen the diffuser go down and Scatman goes down two. Shin does. Number two somehow survives. Swings on the shotgun, but Napier swings back and Xavier swing their way up through this bracket fantastic game there between these two teams and I think even though it was a 2-0 there to Xavier what we did see is a significant amount of fortitude amount of pressure aggression come out from Fab and a lot of really good gameplay that just simply got outshadowed by the end and one of the more satisfying things I have to say that we did say was the fact that Derry got proved